Could have lost an arm, face, leg, all kinds of shit. Reptiles, my uh, wife's oldest son, probably six years ago, wanted a snake. Start off from there, I bought one. I don't go small on anything, really enjoyed it. Had it for probably two months. Went to my first reptile expo, which would have been a Lone Star. And I think I bought every snake I could see in there. I think I spent five or six grand easy. I bought all Don Shore stuff, bought a bunch, but I, I really enjoyed the the Klubers. I enjoyed milk snakes, corn snakes, um, king snakes. <clears throat> Started there, then I went out and uh, cheated kind of and went right for adults and started buying adults and buying good adults. Five, six years ago, the internet's really different now. It's a lot easier to find that kind of stuff. I, I searched and searched around and I built a pretty decent amount of snakes very fast and learned my first season. I had probably 20 clutches. I had a lot of fun. And then I kept buying and buying and buying. And the second season, I had like 2,000 babies. And that's when I found out it's really hard to do that and have a full-time job, take care of everything. Then we had babies. Real babies. Real babies. <laughs> um, this is one of them. And so this would have been my third year into it. I decided <clears throat> I can't just go to shows to sell corn snakes, milk snakes, 20 bucks a pop. Some shows are, you sell 100 bucks. You spend 500 to get there. So I was like, all right, I gotta find something else or I can't keep doing this. So that's when I started in dry goods. Then I decided to sell off my collection and focus mainly on dry goods. Then I really miss the snakes. So I partnered up with Ryan Sullivan, known some snakes out there with him. That way I can still get the enjoyment of the fun stuff. The going out there and holding a snake, put it back in there and not having to water, clean it, all that good stuff. I honestly started this business with 500 bucks and I floated that 500 bucks. I, I didn't spend a penny of my reptile money for three years. Any profit, anything I made, I put back in my business until now I spent 30 grand to be here this weekend, at least. On what? On Just all the tables? And I probably had 30 grand in my trailer. <clears throat> so I probably got $60,000 in inventory. but. I blow money now, but for the first three years, I didn't, I wouldn't buy a Coke with Southern Reptile or DNA Reptiles money. I would not spend a penny. Now I'm, I'm doing this full time. Yep, I've been doing this full time three years now, three, about three years. It, I do 40 shows a year, 45 shows a year. <clears throat> I do a lot of double show weekends, it's a lot of money, but you gotta spend money to make money in this business. That's just how it is. If you enjoy your animals and you love your animals, you got to have low end too because not everybody's going to spend the big bucks that you would spend. That's what a bunch of people don't understand. You got to have thousand dollar snakes to fifty dollar snakes. That's just how this works. Because you might sell a thousand dollar snake at this show, but you might not in the next ten. You never know. That's just how this business is. Or you might have some jackass come in there with the same animal that you do that don't do it for full time and sell it for twelve dollars. I've seen it a million times where they're selling it so cheap you won't do good at that show but if you're doing it for a full-time job they pretty much just cut your throat mm -hmm. this is a cutthroat business there is a retail price but i'm way under retail i i get a lot of grief of my because of my prices but i want to sleep at night and i want to make sure the reptiles go home with at least a basic setup i don't i get some people that will buy what i tell them but i get a lot of people that pick and choose what they can afford now and i'm up front i'll tell them you're going to kill the animal and they get so mad at me. I've had lots of complaints, but it, I'm up front. I don't care if you don't like me and you don't like how I tell you. I care about the reptile more than you. That's just how I am. So when they come in to buy an $8 turtle, I've gotten almost a fist fight because of an $8 turtle. Because the guy told me it's an $8 disposable turtle and I lost my shit. I almost choked the guy out in front of his whole family. I did cuss him out and Sean Gray come over and pulled him and told him you better leave before that guy tears your head off because you can't come into a place where people love reptiles and tell them it's a disposable animal. They wanted an $8 turtle, but they didn't want to spend $38 in lights. 
that's how it is. The, some people don't understand the cheapest animal is the most expensive one to set up. Bearded dragons, you buy them all day, 25 bucks. Bare minimum, it's $150 to get started. That's just how it is. But people don't like, you know, but that's how it is. And that's why I try to be as, most, as affordable as I can where I still make good money, but I don't try to rip anybody off. I could easily put 30 more percent and still be competitive with these other guys. I blow most of them out of the water. So that's why I used to go to a lot of shows where there's five or six dry good vendors. Now it's me because of my pricing. They just can't compete. They don't understand. Just because they think I don't make no money, but it's not that at all. It's I buy thousands of dollars at a time. I don't buy one at a time. I buy 10 of this or 10. Just this show right here, I brought 120 pieces of glass. I'll sell out. I'll probably have to get some from home, my overstock, and okay. bring it up here tomorrow, uh, Saturday night. I'll bring it up Sunday morning because I'll sell out. The biggest thing, don't spend your money. You have to, if, if for example, I have $60,000 into it, I have $70,000 that ain't even my money. It's Southern Reptile Supplies. I won't touch it. I don't care if my best friend's dying and is gonna die and need a 10 grand, I would really have to think about if I wanted to put my business in jeopardy. If you're loyal to your business, you never touch your business money. That's your business money. That way you never get hurt. They did a deal last week on tanks. I only got an extra 5%, but I get cash back and all this. So it turns out 12%, that's free money. Cause I was gonna buy the damn thing anyways. So I stock up then. I do have Southern Reptile Supplies. I have a full website, about 900 items, and I sell quite a bit on there. Um, I have done eBay and stuff like that, but it's too much work. Yeah. If they really want it, they'll go to my website and go from there. Probably 80%, 80-20, and that's 80% at shows, 20% online. Because I can, I don't bullshit. People like that. Some people don't, but 90% of your people, they want it straightforward because they'll say, I've been to Petco and they told me this. Well, I don't give a shit what they say. This is what you need. This is how you do it. This is bare minimum to make the animal happy where it'll stay alive and actually not just barely stay alive. It will thrive, it will keep rolling. And that's what I try to set them up with. Anything new comes into the, the market, I buy it up immediately and try to do it. RepTiChip came in, I bought the rights to RepTiChip. That way I don't have eight other people at the same show with RepTiChip. I'm the only one unless I sell it to you. And then I don't, those guys I tell not shows, they sell it wherever else, but not at shows. Uh, so it's just jump on those kind of things that you see that's really well, that's working good but that way you don't have a bunch of competition. I hate competition. Competition, I'll crush out in competition. That's just how I am. If I have to go in the hole at this show, tom tomorrow, if somebody else pulled into this show right here at any RBC and brought a bunch of tanks and all that, they would take them home. I would lose money to make sure they didn't make money. That's how this works. So if you let them come in your neck of the woods, they'll keep, they'll keep coming. They would come one time, lose a shitload of money, and never come back. I would put mine below cost just to make sure I'm selling mine and that way I'm lazy I don't want to carry shit home so I'd rather at least get cost I've done it a million times where I get my cost out of it and and be happy and then go on about my day I've built my business for so long where if I don't make a penny here it don't matter to me You're okay. I'm fine it don't matter to me my dry goods when I'm done I put it in the trailer and I don't have to think about it Monday <laughs> all these other guys say I work too hard because it does take me eight hours to set up but guess what I'm normally tore down before they're out of here and you get to go home and i go home and as soon as i get home the hardest thing i got to do is unhook a trailer and that's it and i normally don't even do that shit. my guys do i back it in they unhook it and i pull out you can you, you can trust whatever you want i i sell four or five hundred thousand dollars a year on sumed products i never have no complaints light bulbs are the worst thing but everybody's light bulbs suck everybody has their own Oh, I like XO or I like Zoomed or I get it all the time where I only buy this. Well, I don't have that. Sorry. Well, but you're so cheap. Well, this is what I have, but I can't. You want me to take the name off and put a different name on it? I don't know what you want from me. So um, it's just, it is what it is when it comes down to that kind of stuff. Exoterra is a lot cheaper product, um, but they won't work with your little guys. They want you to have a full brick and mortar. I have a warehouse. Uh, I do a lot of Zilla and a lot of Zoomed. And that's what I stick with because those guys work with me. Oh uh, man, I wish we could all get along a lot better. That'd be kind of cool instead of a bunch of pansies on the internet think they're tough. It just gets old, man. It's everybody likes their own projects. Everybody does their own projects. 
if we just all get along, it'd be a lot better, and we could probably build this to even better than it is now. I mean, it's not a bad hobby. It's just everybody hates this guy or that guy. or I mean, you're always going to have your bad apples, but it's like everybody in every little group is just like, that's why at Dry Goods, I get away from a lot of shit. I try to play, you know, I try to just stay neutral because I want to sell to everybody. I want to take everybody's money. So I kind of keep my mouth shut on a lot of stuff, but the hobby is here. It's just... Man, I wish everybody would just help each other out instead of cut each other down. Greatest, re let's see. I've been on a bunch of crazy ones. Probably one with Ryan Sullivan when we went and picked up a Cayman. We pull in this guy's house and it's like section eight, like government housing. And we think we're totally f What did we do here? We're, there's no way there's a seven foot Cayman in this place. No fucking way. And we pull in, and me and Ryan are like, what the hell? And sure enough, there she is. Her name's Pig. Diamond, beautiful animal, and a little bitty shithole pond that's wired down because the guy was scared to death of her. She'd hurt you real bad. You know, Ryan, of course, he ain't scared of shit. Got it home, we were trying to figure out how the hell we're going to get it from that little tub to this big enclosure we, we built. We tried to get it up. She's heavy, big old, t it wasn't working. So Ryan just pretty much grabbed her and held her and... Could have lost an arm, face, leg, all kinds of shit. She was real sweet, thank God. Put her right in the tub. Right into her permanent home now. And uh, that's probably one of my craziest stories. It was, it was a fun day. It was a 13-hour day to go get her. But it was worth it. She's in a better place, better home. She'll never leave the farm. She'll be there forever. This spring, we're going to build a 20 by 20 shop and set it up proper. And that way we can do Cayman ponds on the outside and they come in and out when they please and because you really don't want to be handling those animals not when they get that big it's just an accident when it happen it's actually not even me and Ryan's animal it's Emily's my four-year-old took that animal it's not ours Ryan's just a caretaker and I I just bought it and it's not mine no more it's it's definitely Emily's